Good evening, one and all. Good evening, sisters and brothers, and um, welcome to this evening's evening prayer. Uh, we are still in Monday, Monday, the first week, first full week of the new year. And we're hearing today that uh, seems like a complete lockdown is on the way again for us in our country. And so we're preparing for that, and uh, that will clearly affect our church service and so on and um, and it seems probably it seems like it's the right thing to do I, I, for us to get a, a handle on this um, this this virus and this pandemic that's upon us um, we keep praying and um, and if there's a lockdown we keep looking out for one another and keep trusting that God hears our prayer and God provides a way of escape. God always provides a way of escape for his people when we cry out to him. It's just uh, sometimes happen, uh, not in our time, but in his time. Anyway, so let's, um, let's uh, continue to pray for one another. Let's continue to, to bring all, all of our concerns and all of our needs to our God. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. You laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. To dispel the darkness of our night, you sent, your, you sent forth your Son, the firstborn of all creation, to be the Christ, the light of the world, rejoicing in the mystery of the word made flesh. We acclaim him, Emmanuel, as all creation sings to you. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. And, um, I don't know, um, I want to share a poem with you. I, I gave you a poem, I gave all, uh, all of our people a poem by Dietrich, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Um, and I want to share that poem with you. I, I do love this poem, it's called New Year 1945. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was, of course, was a Christian martyr who was killed by the Nazis. Um, during World War II, uh, a minister in the Lutheran Church in Germany. And I do love this poem, and um, it's a poem for a new year. And I do want to share it with you. Um, I okay, I'll share it with you. With ever power for good to stay and guide me, comforted and inspired beyond all fear. I live these days with you in thought beside me and pass with you into the coming year. While all the powers of good aid and attend us, boldly we'll face the future, be it what may. At even and at, new, at morn, God will befriend us and oh, most surely on each New Year's Day. The old year still torments our hearts unhastening. The long days of our sorrow still endure. Father, grant to the soul thou hast been chastening, that thou hast promised the healing and the cure. Should it be ours to drain the cup of grieving, even to the dregs of pain, at thy command we will not falter, thankfully receiving all that is given by thy loving hand. But should it be thy will once more to release us, to life's enjoyment and its good sunshine, 
that we've learned from sorrow shall increase us and all our life be dedicate, dedicate as thine. Today, let candles shed their radiant greeting. Lo, on our darkness are they not thy light, leading us haply to our longed-for meeting. Thou canst illumine even our darkest night. When now the silence deepens for our awa for our hearkening, grant we may hear thy children's voices raise from all the unseen world around us darkening their universal paean in thy praise. While all the powers of good aid and attend us, boldly we'll face the future, be it what may, at even and at morn, God will befriend us, and oh, most surely on each New Year's Day. Amen. That's kind of like a refrain in the poem. He repeats that, uh, that stanza twice. But um, it, it is a beautiful poem. I um, do have a look at it. I did send it around. Let's continue to pray. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And um, the collect for this evening. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image and yet more wonderfully restored us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as he came to share our humanity, so we may share the life of his divinity, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our psalm this evening, our psalm is Psalm 87. Psalm 87. Psalm 87, he has founded his city on the holy mountain. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the other buildings of Jacob. Glorious things are said of you, city of God. I will record Rahab and Babylon among those who acknowledge me. Philistia too and Tyre along with Cush. And I will say... This one was born in Zion. Indeed, of Zion, it will be said, this one and that one were born in her, and the Most High himself will establish her. The Lord will write in the register of the peoples, this one was born in Zion. As they make music, they will sing, all my fountains are in you. Amen. Amen. Were you born in Zion? That's a good, that's a, that's a question. Zion, of course, is a representation of God's people, is where God is. The city of God is the people of God, the place where God lives, where God dwells. And, and this psalm is, is, in a sense, it's a prophecy. It's looking forward to the time when people from all over the world, will be born in Zion. Will, Zion will, will be their birthplace. There will be citizens of a new city. People from Tyre and Rahab and Cush and Babylon, from foreign cities, will come to this new city and they will have a new home. And, um, and, and they will sing of this new home. All my fountains are in you. All, 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 all my fountains, all that gives me life, all that gives me joy is found in you, Mount Zion, my Lord 
And that is why we have a hymn. We have a hymn. Um, Glorious things of thee are spoken. Zion, city of our God. I love that hymn, by the way. Um, and it's, a, it, it's a, as I've said many times, Sister Sunday, it has nothing to do with Jerusalem or the place, the, the geographical location in the Middle East. Zion is the people of God, the place, the city in which God dwells. All right, Keller's, Keller's commentary. Here is a vision of the new world city of the future. It's citizens coming from every language, from every tribe, people, and nation. Even former enemies, former enemies are now reconciled in this new city. Through faith in Christ, we, his former enemies, are now recorded in the book of life. We are already citizens of that future city, which is filled with fountains of endless joy. Can, you, can any fountain be ugly? <laughs> the, the music of running water and the beauty of water leaping and falling are always joyful in a special way. Those whom God numbers among his people know that all their joy comes from God, springing, dancing, descending, and ascending like a fountain. The fountain, of course, represents the joy that we have in this new city. Sisters and brothers, nothing, no one, not even COVID can take away this joy. It's a joy that bubbles up inside us like a fountain. Lord Jesus, you alone have the water of life that brings satisfaction and joy to our souls, your grace and eternal life. Prevent me from looking to anything else for my happiness for my joy. Who can faint while such a river ever flows our thirst to assuage? Grace, which like the Lord the giver, never fails from age to age. Amen. And that part of the prayer comes from that great song. All right, uh, New Testament reading is Colossians, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 from verse 12 to chapter 4 verse 1. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not embitter your children, or they will become discouraged. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, and do it not only when their eyes are on you and to curry their favor, favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord not for human masters, since you know that 
you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs, and there is no favoritism. Masters, provide your slaves with what is right and fair, because you know that you also have a master in heaven. Amen. All right, so Paul is giving instructions about how to live the Christian life, basically. The first thing he did was give some general general um, rules, general commands, and then he he gives specific things about household um, household instructions for the Christians living in the house, for wives, for husbands, for children, for fathers, and even for slaves. That's living servants, slaves. Uh, in Paul's time, as you know, uh, I mean, there were there were slaves, no, people who live in as workers. Who, who did all the menial jobs, menial um, work, and for the masters as well. So, so all of this is, uh, Paul is giving instruction about how we are to conduct ourselves as Christians, as God's chosen people, as people who have been called by God. Notice he says, um, we are to forgive as Christ ha has forgiven us. Um, or, or, or forgive as the Lord forgave you. That is our motivation for living a holy life, sisters and brothers. Our motivation is Christ. Because Christ has done this for us, we now do this in response, in return. So you forgive, I forgive, not out of some duty to forgive, but because I have already been forgiven. I love because I have been first loved, and so on. And so this, I, you know, I, I show compassion and kindness because God has already shown compassion and kindness to me. Because, so so Paul's, whole, Paul's whole motivation for, for living um, a, a, a holy and, 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 um, and, and a life of of goodness and, and graciousness and love is Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ has done these things for us, we now do them for others. Um, and so, therefore, God, as God's chosen people, notice this, because we are God's chosen people. You know, the Christian message, sisters and brothers, is not do such and such and you will be saved. It's the opposite. Because you are saved, because you are God's chosen people, because you have already been called and received God's grace, now act like it. Now show it. Show it in your life. It is not the other way around. We do not earn God's grace. We do not work for God's mercy. We have already received God's mercy. And now because we have that mercy, we must show mercy for to others. We must be merciful because we have already been shown mercy. Be kind because God has been kind to you. Be compassionate because God has been compassionate to you. Be merciful because God has been merciful to you. Be forgiving because the Lord has forgiven you. And so bear with one another. Forgive one another. All of these things. Over all these virtues put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. So all of these other things, kindness, humility, uh, compassion, um, gentleness, patience, forgiveness, all of these are uh, under the, the, the command of love. Of course, you're, our Lord Jesus himself said, the command is summed up in one word, love. Love God, love your neighbor, two commands. And so all of these things are, are, are assumed under love. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since you are members of one body. Let the peace of Christ. Sisters and brothers, as we go to bed tonight, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Whatever Boris decides, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Whatever the situation with lockdown, whatever we face in this pandemic, sisters and brothers, let 
the peace of Christ. Peace, let the tranquility, the shalom, the complete wholeness and well-being of Jesus Christ rule in your hearts. Take over your life. So many times, sisters and brothers, anxiety take over our lives, fear take over our lives, depression take over our lives. Let Christ, shalom, well-being, fullness of life, complete tranquility and peace and rest, let that take over your life and rest in that. Sleep well tonight, sisters and brothers despite what you hear in the news. Let not the news disturb your peace. Let not coronavirus disturb your peace. Let not lockdown disturb your peace. Let the peace of Christ, the, the complete well-being that Jesus Christ offers, let that settles your soul as you enter into this night. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's pray. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we pray for our world. We pray, Lord. We continue to pray. Bring before you the, the concerns of our hearts, especially during these dark times of pandemic, where the cloud is still over our heads and, and seems to be getting darker and darker. But Lord, we pray for your light in our souls. May we enjoy the fountain of joy in the city of our God. May we enjoy the peace of Christ, despite the chaos in the world, despite whatever else is happening around us, fear and trembling. God, our Father, may we experience your peace, we pray tonight. As we go forward in this new year, may we experience your eternal, your eternal well-being, eternal tranquility in you. Lord, we pray tonight for, for our country. We pray for our world. We pray for our doctors and nurses and all those who work in the NHS, those who work in, in, in care homes, all those that we call the frontline people in our community, in our country. Lord, we pray for them. They, are, they have been working throughout the holidays. They have been looking after people who have been, who, 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 who are um, sick with this horrible disease. Lord, pr we pray for them tonight. Give them strength, Lord, in the midst of this difficult time. Lord, they see so much sickness and ill and, and even death. Lord, strengthen the nurses, the doctors, the carers, the, all those, Lord, on the front line of this disease. Strengthen them, Lord, we pray, and give them your courage, your love, your compassion, your mercy. Oh, Lord Jesus, be with them, we pray. We pray for those who are administering the vaccine. We pray, Lord, that you uh, help them to do it well. And to, Lord, we pray for all the vaccines that are, have been rolled out even today. We thank you, Lord. We are so grateful for this. We are grateful, Lord, for hearing our prayer and providing a way of escape from this pandemic through this vaccine. Lord, our, our hope is not in vaccines. Our hope is in you, but Lord, you have heard our prayers and you have answered in this way, at least one way. And so, Lord, we pray that this these vaccines, whichever one, and all of them, will prove, uh, Lord, to be your answer to this disease that's come upon us. That we will be free of coronavirus through this, uh, as it were, serpent on a stick that you have provided. May we look to this serpent and be healed. And so, Lord, we pray that we will we will receive this gift that you have given us with thanksgiving and that, Lord, you will use it to bring healing and, and restoration and wholeness to our world, to our country, so that we can see the back of this disease that's upon us. 
Lord, we entrust all this to you tonight. And we thank you for the, the scientists and all these people who worked behind the scenes and they were to produce this vaccine or these vaccines. We thank you for the knowledge that you have given them. And we pray, Lord, that uh, it will be beneficial for all of us, for all, we, for all, Lord, so that we all will, will benefit from, uh, from these vaccines when, when we all have to, when we all, when it reaches us, when it reaches us, uh, I look forward to it coming to me. <laughs> and so, Lord, we entrust all this to you tonight. And Lord, whatever else is on our hearts tonight, we bring them all to you and we ask for your guidance, for your help. We ask, Lord, that as we sleep, we'll have the peace of Christ. We will go and sleep with the peace of Christ in our hearts tonight. And watch over us, we pray, this night. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So just a few night prayers. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let's bring all our prayers together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his shalom, his peace, his well-being, his tranquility tonight as you sleep, as you go to bed. Sisters and brothers, have a wonderful night. Amen. <laughs>